Right guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm just going to show you how to fit a Shimano M9000 XTR rear derailleur onto your uh, mountain bike. You might, be, you might be interested in how to do it if you say you want to upgrade, if you just bought a bike, 11 speed, and you want to upgrade from an SLX or something like that, or an XT, um, and you bought, go ahead, got yourself a XTR derailleur and you just want to know how to fit it. Um, with a new cable and that, I'll just go ahead and run through the steps for you. Right, so the first step is obviously remove your chain from the bike. If you've got a quick link or you need a chain tool to remove one of the, the, uh, the rivet, whichever way, remove your chain. First job. Right, so we've removed the chain from the bike, as you can see. Now what you want to do is make sure you've got your derailleur shifted down to the 11 tooth at the back sprocket at the back there so make sure you've shifted your shifter down before you carry on with any other steps so once you've done that then you go ahead and then get your four mil hex head like so and just undo your pinch bolt at the back there just crack that undone like so then you get the cable out and then once you've got the cable out just get your cutters and snip off the uh, the stop on the end there like so and then that will allow you to pull the cable back through obviously if you've got internal route in or you've got external makes no difference um, it's just trickier on internal obviously you've got to reroute it through the uh, through the uh, frame again but um, now you've done that what you can go ahead and do now is get a five mil hex head then undo the mounting bolt there off the frame, off the dryer hanger. Just go ahead and undo that all the way out, like so. Then you can just remove the dryer from the bike, like so. And then once you remove that, we can go ahead and put on a new cable, obviously from the shifter. So I'll go ahead and show you the uh, the shifter end. So now we're at the lever end. Obviously, the Shimano lever. Um, so they're all pretty much the same. If you look on the lever, you've got a hex, I mean a posi screwdriver there, just down there. So what you want to do is find that, like so, and then just undo it all the way out and be careful not to lose it because they're plastic obviously, like so. If you drop it, they're easy to lose. So make sure you put that foot safe. So once you had a gone ahead and remove that like I said earlier if you shifted down to 11 at the, at the back before you cut the cable then the cable the head of the cable is just visible in, in the end there so you can go ahead then and obviously pop your cable out like so just pull back the outer cable there to reveal the inner then just pop it out so you can get hold of it and when you get hold of it, you can just pull it all the way through. If it's internal routing or external, whichever, you'll be able to pull it through all the way through. Obviously, internal routing is going to be more difficult because you've got to reroute a cable back in. So, uh, like I say, there's plenty of steps on how to do that in uh, in uh, the video, so I'm not getting into that. So once you've got, obviously, your cable's been removed now. You can go ahead and obviously thread, reroute your cable back through, like I said, internal, external, wherever you've got, and get it to the uh, the rear chain stay again. Right, so we got the cable all the way to the rear, there as you can see. For now, we'll just leave it like that. Now, before you put your uh, derailleur onto the hanger there, just make sure you put a bit of um, grease. Any grease is better than nothing, but if you get an e uh, and he sees grease on there just put a little bit on the on the uh, threads themselves there before you go and screw it on and obviously it's five mil hex head um, to put it on again so just make sure you've got the uh, the little lug the metal lug there that's going to hit make contact there make sure the lugs are making contact the lugs making contact there on the uh, derailleur hanger um, when you go and screw it on 
because if not it's not going to be on there properly so just keep your eye out behind it and make sure the lugs actually um, going to make contact when you're screwing it on so go ahead and get that started right so once you got the uh, bolt screwed in all the way there till it stops obviously torque it up afterwards to the recommended spec so at 8 newton meters torque that up so once you've torqued it up then obviously you can just go ahead and uh, put your cable through like so just get that get that in position so put that all the way in there like so so that's in and then we move on to uh, the uh, high and low adjustments and getting the cable um, in position and actually clamped up right so as you see we've got the trailer on there and everything we just got the cable is, is not anywhere it's just not pinched up or anything now you, to do the uh, adjustments make sure you've got the derailleur in the off position to start with not on off make sure it's set to off um, so the screws obviously here two mil hex as these are high screw there obviously it's got a H by it and the low screws there with the L by it and the other screw is a B screw adjustment there so you so what you want to do is we concentrate on the high adjustment so obviously the high and low now you can see so I'll do the low first so when the trailer comes across like that to obviously the largest at the back so if you've got 40 or 42 46 whatever you've got you can see there that that screw is just adjusting that where it stops so obviously you wind it back out and it allows it to go over further that's all it's doing so if you push it over by hand and then look straight down it's a job to see oh, with the camera but obviously you can see that that's not over far enough it's, it's probably about three it's hitting about the third sprocket over so it's got to go right over to obviously the largest one so obviously the low screw will need adjusting. You can see there, you adjust it outwards, obviously, so anti clockwise. Now you just give it a few turns, like so, and then try it. Obviously, I'm doing this on the camera, but obviously, then you can see where you got to, like so. So, as you can see there, that is actually in line. It's dead in line with the fork with the uh, this happens to be a 40 on the back, but it's it's actually in line. So what you want to do is you don't want it dead in line. What you want to do is put it so the jockey wheel is past so as it's not in line with it, you want it so the jockey wheel is just about the width of the jockey wheel past towards the spokes. So when you take the tension up on the cable, you'll find that it'll bring it back in again. If you don't, if you put it dead in line, when you when you pull the cable through and pinch it up with a pinch bolt, you'll find that when you shift up, it stops. It will stop on here, on the second one down. It won't go all the way up to there, and you wonder why it won't go up to there. So you want to set it past it by about the width of a jockey wheel, say, past towards the spokes. So obviously you need to. Give it a couple more turns. Obviously, you saw it was in line. Just give it a few more turns, anti-clockwise in this case, and then obviously you just push it over by hand. We'll see. I've, you can just do all this by hand. So obviously, I've got that set now. So that's probably about right. It's about the width of the jockey wheel. The jockey wheel go behind the largest. It just slots behind it, like so. So what we do is we'll leave it at that for the that one. Obviously the low screw, like I just said. And then the high screw is just the opposite. It's just the position against the smallest at the back, the 11 tooth at the back. 
So all you do then is just rotate the dryer upwards and then look down, obviously look down at it and see if it's anywhere near in line with the 11. Obviously that's not, it's about, it's in line with the next one in. So all we do then is we just adjust the opposite screw, so the high screw. So we we'll wind that so as the top jockey wheel in this case is dead in line with the uh, 11 at the uh, the 11 on the uh, cassette there, 11 tooth rocket on the cassette. So that top jockey wheel is dead in line with that. So just make the adjustment on the high screw to adjust that. And then that's the high and low set. All the high and low is, is obviously the low is how far it goes over that way. And the high screw is how far it goes this way. It's got nothing to do with anything in between. It sets nothing in between. All it's doing is the literally the largest and the smallest that's all that that's all those screws do so once you've done that you're ready to move on to the next step right so we've done the high and low adjustments so now what we're going to do is I'm not touching the B screw at the minute all I'm going to do now is obviously slacking off the 4mm hex head for the pinch bolt and then put your cable through in position He's lacking it off enough. There's a little, just a little plate there, or it drops down. And obviously, you can put your cable through and get that in the right in the right position. So once that's once you got it set in there, then you got to make sure that the the the, that the plate itself goes in the right place when you're tightening it up so there's no point in tightening it up and the plates moved and it's in the wrong place you got to put it so the plate stays where it's supposed to be obviously it slots in the plate so you got to make sure that when you're doing it up it doesn't it doesn't just spin round and just clamp it in the wrong in the wrong place sometimes it can be a little bit fiddly but once you get it in the right place then you're ready to clamp it up. Now what you want to do is before you before you do up the pinch bolt and pinch the cable itself, make sure that obviously the lift the shifter is set to the eleven that it hasn't moved by accident, you haven't pressed anything, make sure it's set down to the eleven. And then obviously you just want to pull on the cable, just wrap it around your hand or your fingers and give it a pull on it quite you know pulling on it hard and then once you're pulling on it then just pinch up the cable like so so it's pinched up and then once that's pinched like that then you can go ahead go up to your lever and then try it like so And then, if you try it and you get a situation like so, now, as you can see there, the top jockey wheel and the largest sprocket at the back are making contact. And that's one down even, they're still not, they, there's not, there'll be no gap for the chain to, to run through. So you want about a six, seven mil gap, roughly. So the chain will pass through. So. Then what you want to do is go ahead, 2mm Allen uh, hex head, like I showed, and you can find your B-screw like I showed earlier where it is. And then just adjust the B-screw. Give it a few turns. And then obviously go up to your lever. And click it again. Make sure it goes onto the top. Cog at the back and make sure you've got clearance for the chain to pass through. That's the most important bit. If, if the chain's not going to pass through, then you're going to have problems with shifting. So make sure you've got a gap there for the chain. 
you can set the B screw again after when you've got the chain on there but make sure the chain is actually going to go up to the the highest at the back so obviously when you're setting it up the, uh, when you're doing the fine adjustments if need be then you know that you know you're actually going to get to the largest at the back if you've got 40 42 46 like I said earlier so you can see that would work there so I'll see you shift back down like so so if you've got all the gears working as they should and they're in line just check the, obviously the chain so when just check that the top jockey wheel and the largest at the back are in line before you put the chain on or do anything don't cut your cable do it do anything like that just make sure they're going to be in line so obviously it won't run smoothly if it's not dead in line you don't have to worry about the chain then shift all the way back down and check that obviously it's going to be in line with the uh, with the 11 stand behind it and look so you're looking make sure it's going to be in line before you do anything else so once you're happy that they're lined up that they're going to be lined up then obviously you can go ahead and refit your chain back on the bike so I'll go ahead and do that right so as you can see I've refitted the chain now the excess cable I haven't cut the cable to length or anything yet it's just wrapped round the outer cable here just to keep it out of the way otherwise it'll go into the spokes when you're trying to do the setup now this is just how I fit it, I've just put the chain on, I haven't tried anything so this is as straight as it is so what I'll do, I'll start pedalling obviously I put the chain on in about in the uh, third sprocket up there now so that's just how it is so I'll start pedalling then we'll move it up towards the out, towards the largest at the back I made no adjustments, any fine adjustments whatsoever, this is just how it is. So now when you get to that position there, now what you can do is check your B screw. Obviously we adjusted it earlier, just roughly, so you want to check that again. Obviously you can look from the opposite side of the wheel and look in and you can see where the top jockey wheel roughly is and the outer, the teeth here. And obviously you want it so the chain's passing through nicely. It's not getting interfered in any way with the top jockey wheel and the largest at the back. So obviously if you need to adjust it then go to your B screw and adjust it either clockwise or anti-clockwise depending on what you need to do. So once you've done that and you're happy with the gap there then obviously you can come back down and make sure that it's not skipping in any of the, uh, in any of the gears. If it's going to skip, it'll probably skip around the sort of third, third one in, something like that. Um, if it's going to, roughly third, fourth, something, you know, around that area. Um, and if there is any skipping in it, and obviously what you do is, you go up to your lever end, and you can adjust the barrel adjuster on the back of the uh, shifter itself to get rid of any... Um, issues with where you've got half a gear where you change gear and it won't change um, say you're on the fourth one up and you want to change down to the third one you change but the, but the chain still stays on the fourth one so you can adjust that with your barrel adjuster so you just need to adjust the barrel adjuster just a bit at a time um, not half a turn not even that at a time and just get it so as it's shifting smoothly but sometimes, like you say, you don't need to touch the barrel adjuster at all. You can just, like I say, I'll drop down the gears, like so, and just see if there's any that need any attention. Try them on the way back up as well just to make sure that they're all good a little slight hang up on that one but drop it down again and see no that's okay yep and you come back down again obviously just leave it somewhere off the bottom 
like so. So I say, if you need to make any fine adjustments, use a barrel adjuster on the shifter. If you don't need to make any, obviously, and you're happy with everything, then I like say the excess cable that you've got. Never cut the cable until you're happy with everything. Because once you cut it, you can't you can't uh, redo it if you need to. So always cut the cable and then put a fresh cable stop on last. Just check your pinch bolt again, make sure that's done up enough. And then obviously you can get your cable stop there. And on these, make sure that you don't leave too much cable because as it as it moves, as the drailing moves, so does the position of the cable. So you could be riding along and then it, a mile later you're wondering what the ticking noise is it's because the cable stop or the cable itself is just in the spokes slightly as the drailing moves um, inboard and outboard the position of the cable changes the piece you've cut off so don't leave it don't leave it massively long just cut it off somewhere like that and just put your cable stop on that's plenty so obviously we just snip that off and put a stop on it like there just cut that off and then I'll put a stop on it and just crimp it on right so I'll just put the old um, stop on the cable there and the end cable end there and we just crimp it on there like so and that's basically the installation uh, complete there. Right, so here we have the SLX M7000 rear drainer GS. 325 grams. Right, so here we have the XTR M9000 GS rear drainer. 235 grams. Right, so that's the installation complete there behind me. You say if you follow the steps, it's simple enough to do. So if you want to make an upgrade, say from your um, SLX to a XTR or an SLX to a XT um, Dralia, or if you're fitting one for the first time, um, then you might have found it helpful. So if you did, give the video a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to the channel for more cycle-related content. Till next video, ride safe and I'll see you then.